Hello and welcome to my channel, On the Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And today is my crochet hook review. So quickly, what I'm wearing today, I'm wearing the Crescent Shawl. That is a pattern that's out on my Etsy shop. This is warm. I have on wool today. I know it's only 50 degrees out there, but it's not sunny. So I find it to be quite cool. And I was having lunch with my husband today. So I drove over and picked him up at work and I had on this wool sweater and it's very, very warm. I really like it. It's thin wool and I, I love this wool top, but it wasn't warm enough. So I threw on my crochet shawl and I wore it like this while I was eating because it was cold in the restaurant. And then later I can pull it up like this or I can wear it as a scarf and throw it around my neck. I really love this shawl and the reason I, one of the reasons I love it so much is because I made it from Red Heart Colorscape yarn and this is one of the balls that I have left. This is called Dublin, which is quite beautiful there. But I made this out of the color Rome, R-O-M-E. Love it, love it, love it. It's very comfortable too. It's not scratchy. It's a little tiny bit rough, but it's not scratchy. So I don't mind it one bit being around my neck. And it's very warm. I love the size of the shawl. I just really enjoyed making this. It's not difficult to make. But it is a nice shawl that you can whip up for somebody in just two or three days or less. Um, it's made with a large hook. And I'm sure I used a clover on this. And I really like it. So um, the pattern will be down in the description box if you want to give it a whirl. It's um, a link down there that you can click on and go directly to the pattern. First of all, I'm going to talk about all the different brands of crochet hooks. So I'm going to start out with just a general look at a lot of the crochet hooks that I have been using over the years and some that I've recently bought and give you my opinion about what I think of these and how they work with the different yarns. There's so much variety in crochet hooks that I'm sure you can find one that you really like. But I'm going to be speaking about each one individually if I can remember anything that was just uh, stood out to me that was different about that particular hook. Now I'm going to show you these. These hooks are all the different ones. Uh, most of them are different brands and I've just set them on my desk. This is the difference in the length of the hooks. Look at that. They're all lined up on the bottom as you can see but the length of the hooks is quite varied and one reason that that's an issue is that if you have little hands then that's not such a big issue but if you have larger hands these are really difficult to hold on to now a little history i grew up crocheting from a very young age and all we had were aluminum hooks that's all that was available i know if i had seen something else and wanted to try it my mom would have probably bought it for me but she was a prolific crocheter and she always used aluminum hooks or metal hooks and did a lot of work with tiny thread. And then when she got older, she gravitated to a G hook and that's all she would use in the old style with the narrow shaft and the narrow handle. And she never used anything different. Even though there were others now available, she just really wasn't interested. And I totally get that. But now that we have so many that we can choose from, you should really be able to find an awesome crochet hook that will fit your hand, that is comfortable in your hand, and that will work for you. So all of them are different. I'm sure they all have supporters. So I'm just giving my opinion here. And I work with lots of different size yarns, and this is what I have discovered. Now, first of all, let me show you what I actually looked at over the weekend and um, tried to come to some conclusions about the different types of hooks. First of all, in this group of hooks right here are the ones I'm going to talk about. I um, will start here. This is a crochet hook that I bought at Joann's long ago. It was one of the first crochet hooks I ever discovered that had the rubberized handle on it and the metal shaft. This is a very excellent hook. I've used this many times. Uh, I, it's, a, it's a J hook, which most of these are, uh, that I'm comparing to each other. This is why this particular hook stands out. There is no label, no symbol, no company name on it anywhere. So I can't even tell you what that is. 
but you might recognize it if they still make it. And it has a very small little bump right there on the handle. So if you hold it like a knife, your thumb is going to be on that little button right there. And it's really excellent when you first get started. It gives you great control. And then when you've been crocheting for several hours, your thumb is so sore you can barely crochet at all. So I would not recommend this one. I, I am a crocheter who will crochet for hours, and you probably are too. Most of y'all um, are crocheters and would like to sit down for two or three hours and crochet. I certainly do. And when I get a crochet hook that hurts my hand, I have to retire it. So this one was retired in my box that you saw on my thumbnail. This is the box of crochet hooks that I've had um, for many, many years, actually, when I gave away a lot of my yarn to the uh, one of the church groups that did a crochet and knit projects for the homeless and for nursing homes, actually, they did it mostly for nursing homes, but I gave away probably a hundred crochet hooks. I was always buying crochet hooks looking for that ultimate hook, and I know we all are, basically, but this particular hook is one that I would not recommend, only because of the little button on there even though when you first start using it, it's great. So I'm gonna keep that in my box and every now and then I look at it and I go, no, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, so next on the list is boy hooks. And I know y'all have heard of these. These are B-O-Y-E, these are boy hooks. And this is an aluminum hook with a flat piece right here where you hold the hook in your hand. And I have found that these work okay for knife holders because there's plenty of crochet hook coming out the back so you have good pivoting ability there and when you use these hooks they're very very thin so they are easy to go into the yarn you don't have to push so hard but there again they have to be held very tightly in order to not lose the grip on the hook. And I would find these much better for someone who, who uses a pencil grip because you, it's really about as big as a pencil, maybe a tiny bit smaller at that point, but you can get really good leverage on it and you don't have to swing the hook so far around because it's not as big. And this using like a little pencil, basically. And I do like these. These are what I learned to crochet on. I crocheted for decades with this type of hook. But when I found hooks with the rubberized handle, it made life so much easier. <laughs> so that's the boy, I'm sorry, that's the boy hook. Now, along with that, and let me stop right here because one of my subscribers wrote me and said that there's a handle you can buy for a boy hook and, or for an aluminum hook that will give it that um, big handle feel. Now, some of you who have arthritis or have uh, rheumatoid arthritis, something like that, where you uh, have a hard time holding on to things, this is the perfect handle. Now, what you do is you buy this. Um, I bought mine on Amazon. You might be able to get it at Joann's. It's the Boy Ergonomic Aluminum Crochet Handle. It comes with different size um, little rivets that you can put inside the handle to hold the crochet hook on. And uh, you can use any size crochet hook with it, basically. It works with nine different sizes of crochet hooks, all the way from a D hook, D as in dog, D all the way to K. First of all, you put the little rivet on here, then you push it through the top of the handle, and then you put the bottom of the handle on and you give it one twist and it um, adheres to the crochet hook and gives it a huge handle. Look how big that is. <laughs> it's as big as your fist. It's a good idea and it extends out past your hand so there's, uh, it doesn't hurt the bottom of your hand. And I, I found it to be fairly nice. I really did. The problem is I don't need that big a, a handle, but some of y'all might because you might have to hold your hook like this because of the strength uh, you may not have in your hand in order to spread out and do the do this motion. So you might have to do it like this. And with this type of handle, that would be very easy to do. And you can use any of your aluminum crochet hooks inside that. Now, what I will say is that it's a little bit sticky. So you don't have to hold it all that hard. You, honestly, the stickiness of the, the handle makes a big difference. And this is kind of sticky. If you get one, you'll see what I mean. It's, it's even stickier than the clover handle hooks. 
So I encourage you to get one of these. And for the cost of a crochet hook or two, you can buy a handle that you can use on different size crochet hooks. And the handle will have that tacky feel and you'll be able to hold it a lot easier. So that's what it looks like. I actually think this is a really good idea. I personally don't need it, but I did want to try it out for my uh, viewer that told me about it and they were right. This is a very nice idea, very nice idea. Now one thing you don't want to do is leave it out in the air because it attracts dust and because I have a dusty office, the dust has adhered to it. So I'm probably going to have to wash it if I want to use it. I don't know if you can see that, but there's dust on this handle because it has such a tacky feel to it. But that's not a detriment. I think that's a really good thing about that particular handle. That is a very good invention right there. I really like that. That's the Boy Ergonomic Aluminum Crochet Handle. And I will put a link to that down in the description box because that's something kind of odd that you might not find just anywhere. And I know Amazon has it, so I'll put the link for you to order it if you want to. The next hook I'd like to show you, and you have already seen, of course, is the Susan Bates. And that is a different shape of hook. And the hook itself is wide across the top. Across the hook right there, it is a little bit wider than some others. It's a little bit flat when it comes back through the loop on the hook. And it actually, I found it to be always easier to use when I was strictly using the aluminum hooks. I really, really like the Susan Bates better than the boy. I would use either one, but this was my preference because the head of it just seems to be flatter and easier to push in and to pull the yarn through the fabric. So I uh, have a whole set of these that I, I haven't used in a long time because they really are more appropriate for a pencil grip. Again, I feel like that is much more appropriate for a pencil grip than some of the larger hooks that you have to hold your hand way up here when you're when you're doing that you have to have a bigger motion with your hand in order to make the stitch so i suggest a smaller hook for those of you who use the pencil grip and that doesn't have to be this small there are others that we can talk about another susan bates hook i bought long ago was a wooden handle hook this is when they were starting to put actual handles on the hooks and they were a little bit um the the hooks were um being improved by putting handles on. This is very, very old. This is one of the first ones that they came out with. And if you'll notice, the handle of this hook is way down here below this thumb holder here, which I, that's what I call it, it's a thumb and forefinger holder. Whether you're holding it like this or holding it like a knife, you usually end up holding it here at some point. They took their old hooks or just the hooks that they had in a production and they slid a wooden handle on it and glued it on there. <laughs> That's all they did um, because it's the same exact length as a regular um, Susan Bates hook and it's uh, just hard to use. You want to hold it back here but then you have to have your fingers up here to make it go and you know it's okay but it's not anything that's so wonderful that I would want to buy any more of these but that's the wooden handled hook from long ago probably 30 years ago I bought this. Very, very old. And they may still have them. I don't know. I haven't looked. Another Susan Bates hook that I've had for many years is the same exact hook, only with a little bit of a rubberized handle. And I don't know if these are still available. They probably are. But they took their regular hook, they didn't do anything to the style, and they just slid a handle on the end of it, which is a little bit rubbery, but not nearly as rubbery as the clover hook. So these may still be out there, I don't know, but they're nice and smooth, but the handle is, is still very small. It's not very big at all. It's just slightly bigger than the crochet, original crochet aluminum hook on the handle part. So uh, that's not much of an improvement, but it does have a little bit more of a rubberized feel. The next hook I have is a tulip hook. I do dearly like this hook. Yeah, I bought one and a lot of my viewers said buy a tulip hook, so I did. I waited to do this review before I bought the tulip hook. I really like the hook. I like the way it feels in my hand. It feels just about like a clover hook. It's a little bit flatter right in here, so it does give you the ability to hold it. It also has a lump right here where you put your thumb if you're a knife holder. And um, I guess if you're holding it like a pencil, that might be the same place you put your thumb. I don't know. 
but since I don't hold it that much anymore that way, I'm looking for a good knife handle crochet hook. So this is how you hold it for this particular hook. And I like it. It comes up shorter here. The shaft is shorter on it than the Susan Bates that I just showed you. And this is definitely designed to have this special handle on it. Now, one thing I wanted to say was on the side of the hook, there is raised lettering. And when I was crocheting with it, the raised lettering was right here under my small finger and actually rubbed it, didn't rub it raw, but it really made my finger sore. And I know that sounds really ridiculous, but um, those of you who have these, I would say that that would be a reason not to use it. Actually, what was rubbing me was the word Japan because that's where the tulip hooks are made. So the word Japan is right there and then the size of the hook is in front of that. But it's raised enough so where you can, you can feel it when you're crocheting and they put it in the wrong place. They should have put it under here where you don't touch the hook under here. They should have put it under there and that would have been much better but somebody thought it was a better idea to put it there and so maybe it doesn't bother some people. Maybe they have tougher skin or it just does, they don't think about it or they don't crochet very long. But over time, after I had used this for a couple of hours, I realized that that was not a good idea. Now, what I thought about doing is in order to use this hook, to shave that down with a nail file, maybe a metal nail file. I would shave the word Japan off of there and maybe even the word tulip because I made a mistake. The size of the hook is on the other side and it's printed on there. The size is printed. On the other side, it's a raised word that says tulip and then Japan. If I was going to use this hook ongoing, and if I maybe it was an odd size or something I didn't want to go buy a clover for or whatever, um, I would probably just shave that off. In fact, I may try it anyway, just for fun. So I might do that. But that's the only reason I didn't like the tulip. The shaft of the tulip is very smooth. It's shaped like a boy hook. And, and it's very, very easy to use. It's very easy to use. I found nothing wrong with it, except that it made my hand a little bit sore after using it for two or three hours. So uh, that's the only thing I would say about the tulip hook. Otherwise, I really, really like it. And you might too. It might not hit you in the same spot. You just have to try these out for yourself. Then, last but not least at all, I bought four furl hooks. And I know um, I had mentioned this before, but the hook that I was comparing all of these to is the J hook, which is the size that I use most often. So I have the J hook in every single brand and lots of other sizes too, but I have all the J hooks in all the different brands that I could find. And this one I used all weekend. I worked so hard to want to love this furl hook because I spent a lot of money on it. I don't think it was $38 or something. I That's outrageous for me to pay for a crochet hook because I have so many of them, but that's okay. I don't mind paying for a very, very good product. If it's an excellent product, I don't mind paying for it. But I'll tell you some things about the furl hook that I like and that I don't. I like them because they're beautiful. That is a beautiful hook. It's got a nickel plated uh, shaft. They didn't have any other colors of shaft. I would have preferred this in a more of a matte finish, but they didn't have that. So I ordered what they had on the furl website. And this is the nickel plated um, shaft. And then the handle is a really pretty um, kind of a sparkly resin kind of uh, material and it's very very slick as I was saying last week in my video the whole thing is very slick I mean it's just very very slick everywhere there's nothing tactile on it so you have to use your strength in your hand in order to hold on to this hook there's no help at all for you there so I did find that when I was crocheting with this when I inserted the hook into my crochet material and pulled it through I had to press harder on the hook in order to pull that loop through and then to yarn over and pull another loop through. Uh, I just, one thing I don't like about it either is that it's heavy. It's a very heavy hook. Compared to a clover hook, this weighs three times more, I bet, 
It really must. I'm not really sure what the shaft is made from, but it's heavy because you can feel it. And when you balance it on your finger, which I saw somebody else doing, the front of it weighs as much as the back, or the back weighs as much as the front. So if you're balancing it like that, you see that the, the hook is beautifully balanced, but it's still heavy on both ends. So you find that it's, uh, uh, and it was for me, it was for me, an effort to use this crochet hook. But because I spent so much on it, I wanted to love it. I really did. I went after this thing. I wanted to love it. I wanted to promote these, but this is too heavy. And um, also where the shaft attaches to the handle, it, there's a little bit of a ridge there, and I guess that's the way they designed it. But there's no flat place, so you have to roll it to roll the, the, the head of the hook, to roll the hook head around, you have to turn your hand. You can't just do your fingers because you lose the grip on it. I did. Y'all might have a totally different experience than I did, but that's what I found about this particular hook. This is the Odyssey, the Furl Odyssey. It's one of the higher priced hooks, but I wanted to try it because I didn't want to just buy the least expensive hook and never try the luxury hook. Now they have one that's $100. But the reason it is is because the handle is made out of something very precious. So, um, and it could be the shaft is gold. I think that may be what it is. But I, I really wasn't in the market for that. And I didn't mind spending $38 on this. But I probably won't be using it very much. I might try to use it just because it's beautiful. Another thing is when you lay it on the table, it rolls like crazy. So, you know, I, I read some reviews of people that said they dropped it because, I guess because it rolled off the table or whatever, and the, the head broke off. Now, one was put, in particular was talking about a wooden furl hook. So I totally get that. You know, wooden hooks tend to break. And if they're not really stiff and sturdy, then they're going to break. Or if they don't have a metal shaft inside, they're going to break. And uh, you have to be really careful with them. And I'll be very careful with this. I did not buy the fancy holder or the leather pocket that you can buy for them. I just didn't want to spend any more money on the hooks. But I will probably keep this in the box. And it comes in a little black box like this. And I'll probably just keep this right in the box like that. And I'll put it away. And every now and then I'll get it out and try to use it. <laughs> I guess that's what I'll do. Another hook that I looked at was a, um, a wooden hook that I found on Amazon. And uh, I didn't pay very much for it. Maybe three, four, five dollars. I don't know how much I paid for this. It's got a kind of a nice design. It's got a, um, a place to put your finger and your thumb on this. If you're a knife holding crochet hook person, then that would be good for you. But the head on this hook is so oddball that I couldn't use it. I, I actually could use it, but my stitches were not even. And it could be that if I tried really, really hard and worked on it for many, many hours, I might be able to make this work. And if I was a person with one crochet hook and that's the only one I had, I would make it work. But since I have a choice of many, many crochet hooks, this was not on my list. Um, it's very, very light though. This is the lightest one that I bought and felt like it was a very nice idea to put that double um, dip on top and bottom. So it was very easy to hold on to and I really wanted this to work. Also, when I was crocheting, it made a loud noise. <laughs> when it went into the crochet fabric, you could hear it it was kind of weird, but anyway, I don't think it's quite slick enough. I don't think they put enough finish on it, and so a little bit slicker finish would have been nice, but that might defeat the idea that it's a wooden crochet hook. I don't know. So that was another one that I tried, and the brand of that one is Divot Shilp, and I'll put this up here. You can look at it. I do not know why that was even on Amazon. Let me see if I can get that to yeah, there it is. This was not working for me, so it'll probably go back in the box, and I don't know if I'll ever use that or not. It's in my other box. This is an H, and by far the most beautiful Odyssey hook in the furl line, I think. This is the purple color. Let me get my hand behind it. This is the purple color with sparkles. I don't know if you can see that. It is very pretty. I have to say, I mean, if you want something beautiful to use once in a while, um, these are really nice. This is an H and it's small and I have a lot of H projects right now. I'm using this on the fingering weight 
two sweaters that I'm designing for um, the next two or three weeks. I don't. I was a little aggressive with my thinking yes on Monday. I think I said I was going to have those done next week. I may have to revise that, but I am working on those, and they're both made with an H hook, and so I bought the H Odyssey to work on those. And let me tell you, when I started working on them, I could not crochet with this hook, with a small yarn like that. It did not work for me. It might work great for you, but it did not work for me. So uh, every time I pulled this through the uh, crochet fabric, it split the yarn. And I never had that trouble with the, the hook I'm using. So I figure it's the hook. It's not the yarn. So there's that one. This is an H Furl Odyssey hook. And it's pretty and it's just like the other one. It's very heavy. It's, it's not nearly as light as my other hooks. So that will probably go back in the box. And I may or may not use it again. I don't know. And then two more that I bought from Furls. I know I spent $100 on the Furl site and I could kick myself, but not really. I mean, I did want to try them and I'll give them an honest review. This is an eye hook. Streamline is the furl uh, line of hooks. This is called a streamline hook, and it is a perfectly round hook, just like the Odyssey, only it doesn't have the metal shaft. It is a wood hook and a wood handle. Very, very, very slick. This is slicker than the other one, I think. It has a slicker finish on it, and I'm a guess that you, if you kept it washed, it would stay very, very slick. I mean, I know you get, you know, sometimes you get makeup or uh, lip balm or something on your crochet hook handle and you have to clean them off. But this one is very, very slick. And I found it to have the same hook head as the Furl Odyssey, of course. It's, set, it's shaped just like it right there. It's shaped just alike, but I had a hard time crocheting with this too. And not because it was heavy. This is a very light hook. It's a very light hook. But it is so slick, I was constantly pushing my hand back on the crochet hook to stay in the same place. So finally, I had to grab it tightly in order to crochet with it, and it just wasn't worth the trouble. I was having to spend more energy worrying about the hook than actually crocheting. So then my stitches were not even. And like I said about the other crochet hook, if I was on an island somewhere and this is the only one I had I would make it work but now that I have a choice this is not my choice it has the size of the hook in large print the number of millimeters in large enough print to see and compared with the Odyssey which I didn't show you this but the Odyssey has a sticker on the bottom with the size of the hook on it so that was not a good idea Furl should have put that size of the hook into the handle. I really believe that. Unless the handles are all the same size. Maybe that's the key. I don't know. But anyway, I think that's a real detriment on this one. As much as it costs, that should be somewhere on the hook itself. Maybe even along the edge at the bottom or something, but not a sticker on the end of the hook. I just didn't think that was a good idea at all for as much money as they're asking for the luxury hook. I think it should be total luxury. This is actually more luxurious than that one. I think it's um, it costs about half as much and it's very, very slick. If you like that type of hook, this is a beautiful hook. I really like it. It's the Furls Streamline Hook. Um, it did seem a little bit delicate up here though, though like it, if you hit it hard enough or something, it might break that the top of that hook off of there. But I understand they have good customer service and if you call them and say I broke the top off my hook I don't know what they would work out with you but I understand that they're very easy to work with. So that's a that's a good thing. And the last furl hook that I bought was a K and this is a uh, looks like a 6.5 K furl hook and this is just printed on it's etched out a little bit. It's It's not as nice as the wooden hook but this also has the size of the hook on the actual hook. I tried this hook. It is not as light as the wooden hook, but they're still considered a streamlined hook. So that's what it looks like. This is beautiful. It's a white, kind of an ivory color um, hook, and it has little swirls in it. It is a beautiful hook, I have to say. But again, it was very, very slick, and I had a hard time using it. So. Those two hooks are not going to be at the top of my list. 
so y'all know where I'm going with this. I'm sure um, I'm back to my clover hook. I know I've always said I love my clover hook, and this is a J hook, which is my very favorite one. So you're seeing my very favorite hook. This has a wonderful shaft. It's just exactly the right length for all the crochet that I ever need. The hook on it is fantastic. It doesn't get hung up on your yarn. I am not affiliated with Clover. I talk about them all the time, but um, I don't have any affiliation with them. But I'm not promoting Clover hooks except the fact that they are really, really good. I, a long time crocheter, this is the best hook on the market. Now some people say it's not long enough for their hand, and if you have a very large hand, your hand may extend out past it, I don't know. But for me, this is a perfect hook. This is a perfect hook. It's lightweight, it's very, very light, and the handle on it is very tactile. That means it's, you know, easy to hold on to. There's hardly any effort in crocheting when you use this particular hook, this clover hook. Now, clover also, in their larger sizes, are made with plastic. So the plastic is slick as it can possibly be, and I, think they crochet exactly the same, these two, even though one is metal and one is plastic. If you're used to using tiny little hooks, this might be a big change for you. This K hook is, I mean, this seven millimeter hook is one of my favorites. I really like it. All of them are my favorite. I really shouldn't say that. Every one, especially, I love the pink L. The L hook is really nice. This is a plastic hook too. With the K hook, they're using uh, plastic. With the K hook, they're using plastic. The J hook is the last hook that has the aluminum shaft or the metal shaft. I don't know what it's made of. I'd say it's aluminum. And it's not a nickel finish. There's not a nickel type finish on this. It is more of a matte finish hook. So see that? It's a matte finish. It's not a slick, slick, shiny metal hook. And I don't know if that matters, but this slides through the yarn beautifully cotton yarn, acrylic yarn, wool yarn, any kind of yarn, this actually is the best hook for me. Now, um, you might find that one of these other brands is great for you, and that's fine. This is just an opinion. I went through all the hooks, though, and I wanted to give all of them a fair shot. I really did, and I really wanted the furls hook to be 100% uh, all they say they are, but for me, they're not. For me, they don't work because my hands are tired from crocheting so many hours a day, and I'm not complaining. I love to crochet, but if I'm going to put in hours of time on crocheting, I have to have the lightest, easiest to work with hook that I can find, and that would be the clover hook. So that's my opinion, and that's my crochet hook review. I hope this review has been helpful to you. I don't want anyone to think that I'm critical of other crochet hooks. For me, they don't work. For you, they might be awesome. And so I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy or should buy certain brands of hooks. I just wanted to produce a video with some crochet hook reviews that I've learned over the years. I, none of this is only this weekend. The furl hooks, I really did concentrate on them this weekend. But the other hooks I've been using for years and years. And I can give a pretty easy opinion about those. But I really wanted to talk with you about the furl hooks and the clover hooks. Those are the two that to me are important brands and you should know a lot about them before you buy them. I really believe that. I think you should hear reviews uh, from crocheters and see if there's something that you might want to invest in. My suggestion was if you like the furl hooks, buy one. Just buy one furl hook and I showed you four different ones. You might want to take a look at those and make sure you're buying the right one in the size that you use the most. Always buy that first. Or the clover hook, you can buy them one at a time. I will be back on Friday and we will pick the winners of the giveaway. And also, I wanna talk about what month this is. This is the National Crochet Month and I'm gonna do something special for that. And we will have our giveaway winners and I'll give you some updates if I have some for my projects that I'm working on. So I hope you'll join me again on Friday to find out what's on the hook.